today I'm going to be doing a wash painting. I'm walking you through my process now. Um, this was actually inspired by another YouTuber and very popular artist, James Gurney. Uh, in his video, he started by laying down a wash of KC um, and letting that color f show through the painting. I didn't have KC, so I used some acrylic on watercolor paper. Let that dry, and now I'm going in with a colored pencil to just start sketching in some basic areas. Now, in the landscape I'm doing, I'm using a reference that I took back when I was in Colorado in February. Um, this reference was taken in uh, the John Denver Sanctuary in Aspen. I just really like the color scheme and the oranges and blues with the snow starting to melt. Now, I wasn't going for realism necessarily in this painting. Um, I was just going, you know, to play around with texture as well as different colors. I used a limited palette. Um, I used yellow ochre, ochre, Bordeaux red, as well as white and ultramarine. So all the colors I'm using I had mixed from those colors. As I'm starting now, I'm just going in with a flat brush and walking in some shadows for the snow banks. There was some frozen water um, between the banks of snow and quite a few trees and you know, brush around. <laughs> so I'm just blocking that in gradually um, with kind of a greenish hue to that ultramarine that I mixed. Now as I keep going, I'm just adding some more shadows to the background. This isn't necessarily locking in how I'm going to do the entire painting. I'm just trying to get some brush strokes down. And I found that I really loved the texture that the acrylic wash made on the paper. It seemed like the gouache had clung better to the paper and I could get a variety of textures throughout it. Now I'm going in with some of that ultramarine mixed with some white to add just some basic sections of you know the highlights or the lighter parts of the snow. I'm not trying to cover up the entirety of the yellow ochre acrylic. I'm going to let some of that show through to really bring the painting together. What I found um, with the flat brush is that I can get quite a few uh, types of strokes and sizes, despite it being such a large brush, I can get broad strokes, skinny strokes, you know, rough, <laughs> and you go in with some dry brushing every now and then, and it can really add some, you know, fun effects to the painting. I've tried to, you know, on the right-hand side of the painting, cause the snow bakes to slope down. Uh, the little creek was divided into two sections. And then I'm just, you know, continuing to add that bluish color for the snow all throughout it. I'm adding some different textures and letting that sit as a base for what I'm going to build on top of it. Next, I've gone ahead and mixed together a purplish color. I used the red as well as the ultramarine and mixed those together. And I've added a couple darker shadows to the edges of the snow bank uh, closest to the water. And I'm also going in and just adding some you know, branches and twigs. I'm just using the side of my brush and angling it in different sections. Sometimes I'm just you know running across the paper very lightly. Other times it'll be like I'm practically, you know, beating the paper with it just to get different textures and, you know, things throughout the painting. I added some more on the left-hand side, and these are just the starts so that I know, you know, where I want to add the foliage or the plants. I'm also going in with a couple of trunks, tree trunks, <laughs> in the middle ground and background, adding some, you know, just reminders for myself for where there may be leaves or branches. Um, again, just using the angled side of the brush. Um, th that's more of a brown color. I mix that by combining all three colors, of course. So I've got the Bordeaux, the yellow ochre, and the ultramarine. I'm just going to continue adding some you know, minor details here. Of course, they're going to be covered up later on. This is just part of the process. I find if you just lay down some you know, basic strokes or areas of color, it'll help you come back to that later on in the painting as you hop around it. In addition, I'm just adding you know, some more shadows to the water. I really like building a lot of contrast in my paintings and so I'm just adding that all throughout the piece to unify it. Now in this next section I'm just adding some basic you know color to the sky. In this painting I didn't do too much detail for the sky as it was you know quite packedly dense with trees and I was just kind of trying to imply that the color was back there. Um, I added the, the sky textures by just mixing um, some water with the white and the ultramarine that I used for the snow, watered it down, and now I went ahead and mixed a green from the yellow ochre and the ultramarine to add in some, you know, leaves or hints of leaves for those trees, as well as just to the, you know, frozen water there. And don't feel afraid to play around with your brush strokes. Of course, you know, a lot of times these are horizontal, but on the left-hand side, you can see I got a little crazy and started doing it diagonally and 
you know, every which way that I could, and I added that color to the sky. Um, as long as you're having fun with it, that's what really matters. And you know, adding colors where you're drawn to add them is what's important. Next, I've gone ahead and mixed the white with some yellow ochre to add some just preliminary highlights to the snowbanks, and that kind of makes them pop, with, especially with the yellow ochre behind everything. So I'm just going through adding that, smearing out some of the background as it is quite far away. Now I'm just continuing to build up the snowbanks on the edge there, adding some more, you know, white to it to give it some form and depth. I'm just continuing to bounce around the snow, adding that in where I can, blending it out in there, and just using a variety of, again, strokes to build up different shapes, and trying to create a lot of variety in the shapes of the snowbanks, and, you know, how built up they are, where the light's bouncing off of them, etc. I'm also, you know, re-adding in some of the shadows that I may have lost a little, when I was adding some of the white there. I'm just going through with the whole process and building layer upon layer is what works best for me. Next, I'm continuing again with that purple I've mixed from the Bordeaux Red and the Ultramarine to darken up the water. Um, I plan to add in the shadow and then add in the highlights towards the end. I know that in much of my work, I tend to prefer to work dark to light, which is the opposite of what a lot of you may be taught. If you've ever taken any art classes, be it in college or art school, high school, now, even elementary school, I've always gone against the grain there and worked dark to light. Um, you know, they say that it's harder to lighten up a piece once you've gotten it too dark, but I just really like, you know, working from deeper colors, and it seems to work for me. Um, I'm continuing to add in some more bluish shadows here, add in a lot of texture. You'll see that not everything's perfect and smooth, and I felt that that kept really captured the atmosphere or the personality of the place that I was at. It, you know, had tons of personality, and there was you know, sharp pieces and, you know, of twigs and foliage and there was, you know, soft portions of snow and the light just bounces off everywhere. And I feel like it, you know, it helps pieces to, you know, have more movement to them versus looking static and perfect. Not that hyper-realistic art, you know, isn't, you know, have movement or doesn't have movement or life, but I just think getting messy sometimes can be good and can capture emotions or feelings. As I've gone through, I've added some more, you know, deep red to the trees and to the foliage just to really make them stand out against the white and the greens and the snow and the leaves there. And I'm adding some more sprigs of grass to the front. I've taken that red and just started using a round brush to, you know, splatter it onto the page and really pushing the pigment into the paper. And I'm adding some more dark green back there just to help the trees blend together. Again, with the red, it kind of makes me think of like the grass, etc. Um, the John Denver Sanctuary had some really beautiful, um, you know, plants that just had you know, lots of red, you know, grass or, you know, leaves. I'm really not sure what kind of plants they were, but I just thought the reds and oranges in them were absolutely beautiful. I'm going back in, this time straight with Ultramarine. However, I have watered it down some, and I'm adding some more shadows and contrast to the water, just around the edges, because... You'll find that the shadows tend to be near the edges of the land, you know, that's surrounding it, be it snow or dirt or a hill. And now I'm just blending it out. Um, you can actually drag it, you know, across into the water to create reflections. You know, I'm just keeping it very simple and giving it some life. Again, building up the white of the snow, and I'm going to be going back in with that yellow ochre and white to add some more sunlight to where it may have been lost. Adding in a couple of rocks into the water, um, I use the red as well as some blue, and I'm adding just a couple of very vague highlights on there just to keep them built down, and I'm adding more of their own color to the water just to show that it's reflecting and spreading out. Um, just blurring some more of the red in the background, adding some more twigs and leaves where I saw fit. Getting pretty close to being done with this painting now, I'm just continuing to add in some grass, and twigs. I'm about to start blending out the background. There we go. And I'm just, you know, really making the colors mesh together. I really like how this piece ended up turning out. It took me back to the place I was, and at the time I didn't have a sketchbook with me, of course, on my trip, so I couldn't draw in person. But even then, going back to a picture you've taken, you know, where you have happy memories is a wonderful feeling. I'd love to work on getting outside more to paint or sketch plain air. Um, but that time will come when it comes, and now I'm just going in with a red colored pencil to add some interesting textures to the grass and the twigs, the trees, and honestly just kind of scribbling in wherever I want some added texture to rough some things up. 
um, adding colored pencil can really create a wonderful mixed media piece. But that's all. So I appreciate y'all joining in to watch. Um, you can, of course, see this and other pieces of my art on my Instagram, uh, Shayful Art. And with that being said, y'all have a wonderful day.